Be careful. If, ah, if your I'll tell you, I'll tell you stock shot with a driver is kind of that, which we think yeah. we agree is kind of your safer shot, yeah. you need to be a little bit more lined up that way. If you start aiming that way, now things are going to start coming back in too far. So we're going to sort of at sort of the same sort of checkpoint now where there clubs disappeared. This one here now, club is now visible. It's still a bit yeah. on the inside, but for me, that's an okay position. Your left yeah. arm's nice and connected, your left wrist is flat. That's fine with the driver, okay? When he's disappeared there, there's too yeah. much. If you just look at the angle of your wrist there, okay? There's a bit more of the watch. Yeah. The face of the watch now is more that way, where it's yeah. glinting up this way. There's more of the black on your glove visible. You just based it more of that. That's all. Yeah. And once that club gets that far on the inside, you then got to make two adjustments. Either flick roll your hands, which you can time on occasions when you don't time yeah. it's that snap hook or a big block or right shoulder starts coming in and you get back over the top okay yeah. when you get to the top of the back swing there now left wrist and club nice and flat there good position okay coming back in the golf ball club is basically that down there so you can see there's a bit of a haze it sort of appears here so your club at that point there is basically in there into the golf ball nicely lovely path in the ball there now and releasing through so the ball starts just on the left hand side and you get your kind of drift fade yeah which i think is kind of your safer shot yes you know you can draw the drivers we can see on that one there yeah but it's just a risky one you can draw your irons no problem yeah and i would generally say yes some of the guys at mcelroy do draw the ball but the majority of the certainly the longer it is and you're getting into that i mean 260 with the driver is is long yeah i mean not that you're going to average that because the no. tall players average of the the extreme ones obviously a bit more than that but a lot of the tall players average around 290 so only yeah. 30 guys are one of the best players in the world yeah. so 260 is not a bad distance to have and so it's certainly a distance yeah. you could play very good golf with if i was in that because he'd be very happy oh god yeah, exactly yeah exactly the thing is from my point of view it's it's average distance over 10 drives okay yeah. there's all people hitting one that goes 260 but then one that goes 230 if we look at the numbers on here just just in terms of pure distance we've had a couple of miss hits in there yeah if you take averages so your last, where was your two? So that was your 258. Yeah. 258, 250, 260, lovely. Now, that's obviously taken consideration with this, the irons of 164. Yeah. But if you chuck him in, him in, that's going to bring your average down probably to the 230 range, I'd imagine, yeah? yeah. Roughly speaking, maybe 220, which still isn't bad, but that one there and that one there, that's the number. So yeah. as good as that drive at 258 was, at 258, 26, I think they're all pretty... He was a bit right. He was very good. He was your best shot, to be fair, by miles. And that's on the fairway. Those three drives there are not going to save you three shots. No. On a par five, maybe it might save you a shot, half a shot, because you can reach the green or get close to the green in two. Yeah. But unless you can say, OK, I can reach the green and hit the green, so I'm eagle putting... Yeah. You're still going to be birdie putting whether you're chipping on from the green from the side from 20 yards or hitting a wedge from 50, 60 yards out. There's nothing saved. However, him at 175 and 209 at 50 yards offline, there's not many holes out there on button or Mac or any course you're going to play where 50 yards left is findable, is it? That's a lost ball. So, so out of 10 drives, there's two shots there that cost you four shots. Three awesome shots haven't saved you back those shots in there. No. This is why I think from your point of view, it's got to be very much stick to a stock with a driver, get your shape that you feel comfortable with. And maybe if you're feeling on cloud nine, your game is on tip top shape and you're okay, try and turn one down at the 10th on the Mac. Say for the first nine holes on the Mac and you're playing yeah. awesome and you can feel you <laughs> massive control of that club face, by all means, step up to the tee, aim at the right of the mark and just shoom, sling one down there. You go into that green with a wedge, not a high vine. Yeah. You could argue saving your shot if you feel confident enough. Yeah. If your game gets to that tee and you're thinking, oh God, I'm like 5 6 0. Oh. And in some ways, this, this is the trick with golfers, a lot of people fall yeah. into the trap. If you're playing well and you're, say, say to the front nine in 38, so it's three or four, two or three apart, playing really good, that is a time in some ways then to give it a whack because you're playing well. Yeah. But most of the time, we get a bit, oh, I'll go a bit tentative, I'll go a bit negative, okay, I'll just hit a three wood down there, I'll do something different. And then when they're playing badly, oh, I'm nine over the front nine, I'll try and get a birdie. And you think, man, you're playing shit. There's a reason why you're not going to be scoring as well. You hit driver, snipe it in the trees left, or block it to the right, yeah. and make a triple. Oh, now I'm 12 over, oh, God, I'll try and clear the core on the, on the 11th. In, in all disrespect to the golfer, you're not playing well enough to take that shot on. 
Because yeah. the shots that you sometimes try and play are only going to be available to you when you're in peak performance, which will happen on a good amount of occasions. But when you're not playing your best, you've got to go, well, hang on, I'm playing Paul here, so I can't take the shot on. So it's not a negative way of saying, oh, I'll just try it at three wood or a five. You, your ability that day isn't warranted or isn't good enough to take on these shots. Now, OK, do or die in a match play, you're one down the... I don't know, somehow the 10th becomes your last hole or whatever it may be. Or that type of hole under the golf course you'll be playing in the Wayfarers or matches or whatever. And you've got to go for it. Well, if I don't go for it, I'm losing. If I go for it, I'm probably going to lose. But that 1 in 20, I might just pull it off. It might work. You never know. So it's worth taking on the risk. But more often than not, you only take on high-risk shots in some ways when you are playing well because you've got the performance to try it. If you think, if you think it's a, such a risky shot, I don't want to try it anyway, then there's no problem. But there's like a, OK, if I take this on, potentially I could save something. Maybe the 10th on the max is a good example. You could get one down there. If you go in that green with a wedge, you're hitting the green, aren't you, more often than not? You're on top of the hill there with a five iron. You're probably missing me more often than not. If you had 10 balls on the top of the five iron, you'd probably hit the green two or three times, maybe four times. Down there with a wedge, seven times on the green, I would say. How you play? Um, so, yeah, it's a shot saver. 30 on the Mac. You get one turning around there, you can reach in two. You get a cutty one down the right side, you can't. So it, it's potential to save shots. However, if you get it wrong, it's costing you two shots. <laughs> so that's where you've got to look at, OK, is this risk worth taking on? Or if I don't put it off, what could happen? I would say the 10th on the Mac's probably got more danger left. Lose the ball. It's 13 on the Mac. 11th tee. Might be able to wedge it over the top, wedge it on, just to make a fall. Okay, yeah. so you, you kind of just you pick your poise, you pick your pick your battles and so on to decide when you're gonna take these risks on. But more often than not, you take on the higher risk shots when you're playing well because you're playing well. You can do it. When you hit the ball, da -da 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 -da, you step back and go, okay, I'm not playing well enough. Well, it's three wood or hybrid or whatever it may be. So yeah. okay, but just watch. I think sometimes when you try to get that foot back, it just whips it in here somewhere and you get a little bit on the inside. Now you're all crikey. A lot of this has to happen, or a lot of that. And that, I think, may where well lies in, obviously, the different type of fat shots you're getting, mm -hmm. where you're getting a bit slappy fatty, where you're a bit shallow, shallow angle of attack, or steep. You may be getting a little bit this with some of your longer irons, just either over the top or just too far from the inside and just hit bottoming out a bit early, OK? But swing, I've got to say, for the most part, most looking good. I think that move will always be a little tendency you might creep back into. Um, so if you start getting that sort of hooky one, now in some ways, whereas before, this fanning of the wrist would always lead to a slice because you'd always go over the top. Now your hand action is a million times better. You get a bit of a hooky one sometimes. So just knowing what, what shot you're hitting causes by that movement. OK, mate? Okay.